Yeah, Roloff asked me to just give a brief overview of some of the social or societal aspects of the TIF. Um, and before I do, I should probably explain how this aspect of the TIF in particular is useful to be used by innovators and policymakers and end users in general. Um, I think it would be a mistake to see this aspect of this TIF as a one-time use thing. Um, and Yancy and I have been speaking yesterday and, and I've talked to others about this. Um, it, it should really be used as a, as a context-specific device to see how social acceptability is something that changes over time depending on its uses, depending on the context, the space in which is, the innovation is going to be used, depending on the end users themselves. Um, but so now that's out of the way, I'll, I'll go on to some of the, the concepts within it. Uh, okay. So there's four sections within the, the societal assessment. And I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you can see really in the TIF itself um, what these are. So this is psychological concerns, feelings of dread, uncertainty, social stigma, things like that, inflexibility concerns. Can the technology bin be removed if there's a problem with it? Is it permanent? Is it going to change the lives of the people that are going to use it? Usability concerns. Um, is it going to be useful? Is it going to be easy to use? Um, and I know with the, some of the tube barriers, that was a concern quite early on in the development. And responsibility concerns. How do we um, evaluate how responsible the research and development is? So, I mean, a lot of this can be discussed in relation to things like complex materials that the communities that you use in that are going to be engaged with the technology don't necessarily understand. Nanomaterials, genetically modified materials. Um, whether they're safe or not, it can still have quite dramatic consequences for the communities and you know, they can oppose the use and development of these technologies. Um, but for me, and hopefully for you, the more interesting part of the TIF is... Okay, I didn't, this is not my slide, I didn't uh, put it together. Okay. Um, is the cultural, social cultural concerns. And really, the crux of this argument is that, and this is, sounds contentious, but it's really not, that decisions are made or special attention is given to a particular perspective because it provides a natural justification for a particular set of political preferences. So, where there might be many different innovations that can serve a particular purpose and do a particular job, some of them will be neglected because they don't necessarily fulfill the particular way of doing or thinking that fits that local community or the end user. And I'll go through a, a few examples of this just to really push home and you'll see where this triangle comes in. And as we're in Delft, I thought it'd be most useful to talk about some flooding related innovations, obviously, you know, and because I'm talking to the water board. Um, there's of course the traditional hard en engineered structures um, Things like uh, dams, dikes, you know, anything where you can put lots of concrete to stop the water. Um, and these are, of course, the, the more traditional um, instruments. There's the, um, some argue, even more traditional. So these are nature-based solutions. Um, and we've been talking recently about things like the mud motor or the wadden green dike. And finally, there's the individually, individual or community level innovations, such as temporary flood barriers that we've seen already. Um, and these are really useful to small communities, or councils, individuals. Um, and really, you can position these innovations on this diagram. So for the technocrats, this would be people like the water boards, right? So they prefer things like the hard engineered solutions, the things that are long lasting, the things that you can justify over a much longer period of time, 50, 100, even more years, I mean, dikes in the Netherlands, forever, yeah? Um, there's the techno-skeptics. These can be the environmentalists. So they prefer the, the kind of low-impact innovations. Um, so, you know, the nature-based solutions. But even the nature-based solutions require quite hard engineering responses, and, you know, they're, they're often not reversible. But the way they're developed, the way they're promoted, makes them seem a lot more environmentally friendly and they're developed in a certain way as to commit to a particular ideology of environmentalism. And then there's the techno-optimists. These are the people that 
prefer really rapid development of innovations. And this is, I guess, where a lot of the innovations in the Brigade project at the moment sit. These are the, the two barrier kind of things. These are the, the GIS mapping tools that can be developed reasonably quickly and be implemented reasonably quickly. But the lifespan and the durability, um, not of the GIS tools, but of the, the, the temporary barriers, might be a lot lower. Um, but as a consequence of that, the cost is quite a lot lower. They can be implemented by individuals or local people. Um, and so you can see how different technologies need to be marketed and developed in relation to a particular type of context in which they're to be imposed. And this is, a, again, as I said, a, a very specific contextual issue. And all of the technologies of it's, it's, not a, it's not a way of pushing a specific way of developing technologies. It's a way of showing that there's multiple different um, target groups for technolog technological development that these innovators need to have an awareness of and the end users, policymakers need to have an awareness of as well, particularly at a time when the European Commission is pushing um, this plural perspective of innovation. So we, can't, we can no longer just push the, the hard engineering approach. We can't simply say that we need the, the startup model or the, the Silicon Valley model of innovation. There needs to be an understanding that all of these different ways can work together. And I think that's the thing that this diagram and the societal aspect of the TIF really does. Um, and I'll hand back over to Roloff. And if anyone has any questions, just drop me an email. Okay. Sorry, my Dutch wasn't so good. No. <laughs> or non-existent. <laughs> <laughs>